that you must make. Then we pray and wrap up. Seven destiny defining decisions. Number one, very quickly. What is the first decision that every man must make? The decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Please write it. This is the first and the greatest decision that every man must make. The decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Matthew 22, 37. The decision to serve the Lord and to, to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. That you will love the Lord your God with all your heart. And I'm so honored to have our royal fathers come and declare this not just for themselves but for the land. Number two, the second decision is the decision to contend for a superior belief. The decision to contend for a superior belief system. This is very important. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh, give it to us please. As he thinketh in his heart or interchange for mind, so is he. The decision to come out of old belief systems, limiting belief systems, satanic belief systems, mediocre belief systems. Number three. What is the third decision? Destiny defining decision that we must make. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. Please write it down. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. Hebrews 10, 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. A decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. This is to everyone, but particularly let me challenge the gentleman. It is wasteful to just exist. You give value to your life when you connect it to purpose. Beauty without purpose is useless. Intelligence without purpose is useless. It is purpose that gives value to anything you have. That means whatever God has given you in itself cannot be a blessing until you connect it to purpose. Are we learning? Number four, the decision to contend for health and longevity. The decision not just to be physically fit, contend for health and longevity. Please write it down. It is a project that you must make. I will live strong and I will live long. Say that after me. I will live strong. Uh huh. Prophesy it again. One more time. I will live strong and I will live long. Yes, sir. You don't want to live long being weak. There are people who are in the hospital with all due respect. They will not die and they will not be strong. They become a liability to both themselves and everybody around. The value of longevity is that there is strength. If there is no strength, contending for longevity is a waste. Are we together now? There are young people at 30, 40, 25. They are so, I mean, they are so wrinkled. They almost bend over as if they are grandfathers. You ask them how old you are, are you? And they say 27. And you say, I was going to mistake you for 55. Come on now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke weakness from your body. Agility and strength and power. Without agility and strength, you cannot do the work of the kingdom. You will collapse. Contend for health, but contend for longevity. It takes good eating, exercise, training your body and your mind, a correct state of mental health to live healthy. But then it takes speaking the word of God and making prophetic declarations over your destiny to live long. You need both. Contend for health and contend for long life. Are we together? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I choose life in the name of Jesus. No arrow that flies by day. No noisome pestilence that wastes in, in noon, day or wherever will hurt me. No. 
I am immune by the power of the Holy Spirit. No enchantment and no divination shall prevail over my body. My spirit is comfortable living in this body. My organs are functioning maximally by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't believe that the moment you get into a certain age, certain sicknesses come with it. Now, I respect doctors. We have lots of doctors here. But you can define your reality by choosing. In the name of Jesus, at 60, my kidney, my liver, my health, my thinking, everything is intact by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is someone agreeing on that? And you find yourself sick, don't worry. Even while you are in the hospital taking treatment, warn your tomorrow that just because I'm in the hospital does not mean I'm weak. I'm only responsible. It's not weakness, it's responsibility. So while you are going through the surgery, while you are going through the treatment, after everything, don't feel ashamed speaking. And let the devil tell you if you were that powerful, why were you, why did they perform the surgery on you? The devil is a liar. You speak it while you declare strength in the name of Jesus, vitality, energy. The Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is missing. It's the covenant of peace, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. As a preacher, you declare, I will never collapse on stage because I'm, I'm completely walked out. And no, if you, are, if you are tired, you rest, not die. Are we together? The decision to contend for health and longevity. Number five, the decision to be financially or economically empowered. It is a very major decision. Refer to my teaching last week, I shall not want. Please get the teaching, it's online, and listen to it very carefully. It is our heritage in Christ to not be in want. No matter what way or manner it comes, lack and want does not glorify God, period. Settle that once and for all and get it out of the way. Lack and want does not glorify God. You can glorify God in the midst of lack and want. But lack and want is not God's design for you. Just like a person can survive with only one kidney. Am I right on that? I hope. But that is not God's ultimate. But if that is the case, the doctors can manage the person to have just one kidney. But that is not God's best. John 10.10 10, I am come, the B part, that ye may have life and that ye may have it more abundantly. Choose life. The decision to be financially empowered. I don't want to go ahead of myself. And I don't want to make recaps of last week. I've already spoken extensively on that. But my dear people, please listen to this man who loves you sincerely. Make a decision under God that I will not be poor. Anybody who tries to think you otherwise must be ready to defend you in the midst of your pain and the pain of your children. There are many things we are able to do today. Some of the things, the projects that we want to do for people, some of these people will never know Jesus until they have the privilege to go to a good school. It is expensive to preach the gospel. I can tell you, it is expensive to preach Jesus with integrity. You know how much one borehole is? Calculate that times 50. What then is your definition of love if you cannot reach people? What then is ministry? If one borehole is say 1.5 and you do 50, you went to school, calculate that. That is minus whatever it is that comes. That is the price it takes to sell Jesus to a dying world. That is the price it takes to let men see Jesus. How about widows that are fed? How about orphans that would have died? I remember, I think two years ago or so, our medical team went to do an outreach in one of the IDP camps. And when they got to that IDP camp, they found a, a, a young child that was almost left for death. Painfully, the child eventually died. I remember some weeks ago, there was a woman who came with a child, was a sickler. 
join the queue here. I later found out that the child died. It was so painful. As she held that child, you could see a product of pain, malnourishment. You know that she was a sincere mother, but she was incapacitated. It takes wickedness to sell poverty. Did you hear what I said? It takes wickedness to sell poverty. By God's grace and without sounding arrogant, if it is for your own personal food, you don't need much to eat. But my goodness, you need so much. There's no need telling you the things that are done on a daily basis basis for Jesus. They require finances. Integrity requires finances in many regards. Preaching sincerely and not manipulating people requires economic empowerment in many regards. Projects that bring the name of Jesus not to brag but sometimes it's good to say some of these things. The inmates in the Zaria prison not too long ago we bought them a big generator. Every quarter or so, we send bags of rice, stationaries, mattresses. The same was done, I think, early this year at the Kuje prison. These things cost millions and millions of naira. I don't want to tell you how much it cost to do the Manchester conference that had thousands of people coming to Jesus. If soul winning is not ministry, I don't know what else it is. No matter what you claim ministry is, if souls are not won, you are joking. Are we together? I can tell you that. I've told you here what it takes to run this service that you are enjoying right now. It is a miracle. Only God can strengthen men to be able to do that. Hallelujah. There is all, not, not to insult the givings of God's people, but let me tell you sincerely, there is only so much tithes and offerings can do. Believe me. Believe me. You know I'm not lying. There are students now going back to school by the privilege of God's grace. I've had the honor of taking care of over 600 children and families. I've done this for many years. I only continue to add with joy. It takes a lot of resources to do that. Let me tell you. Housing, schooling, everything. My apologies if we sound, I just want to give you a superior orientation. When you don't know what to do with money, you don't need it. God will not even give you for your safety. But when you know what to do with it, you can preach Jesus with financial resources and be a blessing to people. Day and night, my phone is full of the cries and the tears of people. Please do this. I just announced to you some of the things by the privilege of God's grace. The educational fund. Just a test run of it alone was 10 million naira. And it only keeps growing. That is the price it takes to help these children. You know, His Royal Highness, we're having a meeting and he was telling me, and I was so humbled, some children who today have finished school, who if not for that scholarship, would never have had the opportunity to go to school. What then is our definition of impact? Hallelujah. The bags and bags were going to be in Zaria this week now. The concert alone. Do you know how much the bill for the medical? I mean, imagine gathering people. I think they are projecting maybe between 600 to 1,200 people. Free medical services. You go and try to get a drug for, for malaria and find out how much it is. And then there are bags and bags of, and we do it for both Christians and Muslims. I love Christians, I love Muslims, I love everybody in between. We are called to preach the message of love. But that is the price it takes. Imagine me coming to meet your child who says on scholarship and I say, sorry, something has happened. This family, from today we cannot pay your rent, know where you are going. You can imagine. There are many people who are converts, who by the grace of God we are taking care of today. That is the price it takes to keep them standing for Jesus. Sometimes we say these things so that we do not, you know, I have a weakness in trying to brag and share testimonies. It's not something that I like doing. 
But occasionally, if we don't say these things, people just think we're talking about, I mean, what, I mean, how many things? This is all of me. How much money do you need to maintain a person like this? But for Jesus, reject poverty in the name of Jesus. Let it take away shame from your life and don't get beguiled by ignorant people. When prosperity has purpose, it is a powerful weapon in the hand of people. Hallelujah. Contend, make a decision under God. A hustler's approach, I have told you, is a defeated person's approach. All this, I want to make money, so I'll buy a jeep, so I'll enter. No, 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 no. That means you don't know God and you don't understand this program. How many clothes can you wear in a year? How many plates of food can you eat? No. The bigger cause is to be able to send resources for the sake of Jesus. I have seen souls saved. As I stood, I have stood by the grace of God on many crusade grounds. And every time I see souls come to Jesus. I had a very interesting experience in Ghana. While I was doing an altar call, there was this very little boy. Lovely little boy. This boy was kneeling down. And he was really, you know, just sobbing and praying. I had to call him up and held him and prayed for him. I mean, I just, my heart just welled up with compassion. I was almost tempted to say, listen, let me put this boy on scholarship till he finishes school. I just said, well, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Maybe another time. What if that child tells you he's an orphan who is just looking for Jesus sincerely? And then you tell him, I bid you good speed. Go and read the warning James gave us. Show me your faith by your works. If we claim we love Jesus, we must show it. And resources help you to show that you love Jesus. I have vowed under God and as a covenant to you, my dear people, I will never, may I not live to see that day, that I will manipulate you financially simply because we are trying to put something in our pocket. No, there are some of us who fear God. Are we together? But you see, I have told you, I am only able to say things like this because number one, I love Jesus. But I will always say it, number two is because there is food on my table. Am I right on that? Yeah. When there is food on my table, he can give me the confidence to remain and teach the truth that I ought to teach. If there is no food on your table, you will listen to me. But you will get up and go and do some things you should not do. There is a woman, probably she's following right now. Wonderful woman from one of the northern states. And, you know, I'd never even seen her. There was a tragic situation in, in her life. I don't want to go into details. Compromises that happened be, because of finances for her and her family. But today, this woman, by the grace of God and the privilege of his mercy, has been rehabilitated out of that lifestyle, living a life of dignity. She has a business she's running now, loving the Lord with all her heart. If you don't know what to do with money, sit down and learn from those who know what to do with it. Every time you don't have understanding, sit down and learn from those who know. Are we together? Yes. I'm glad I made that decision. It is a decision I, I will continue to make for myself and for Koinonia. So that we can do so much for his majesty. For as long as I'm alive, children will go to school. For as long as I'm alive, we will do our best to see that widows and orphans continue to smile. For as long as I'm alive, I will help people financially. I'm not ashamed to say it. Many preachers will be afraid. Go, ah, be careful. I'm not careful. I will say it. For as long as I am alive, I will not do everything, but I will do my best. Hallelujah. I will do my best. The ones we can help, we will help. The ones we can cry with, we will cry with. The ones we can pray with, we'll pray with. The one who we can stop from living a dirty life to be able to follow a life of meaning and know Jesus, we will do our best. Where we are limited, we'll ask the Lord to show us mercy and raise others who have our kind of orientation. But to chicken out just because of the fear of prosperity message is nonsense. Not Joshua Selman. It's a covenant I have made. I know how money can demonstrate love and we intend to use that weapon and show nations the love of Jesus. If you're in agreement, say amen. amen. Try becoming rich with understanding. 
and see how better your life becomes. Are we together? You will serve the Lord. You will end many quarrels in your family that have no root. You will end many things. You will live in peace. Do you know that remaining healthy takes finances? Because it demands eating well. That they tell you don't eat this, don't eat that. Is it not somebody who has money that can obey that medical advice? Take supplements. Do this. Don't eat rice. Don't eat cabbage. What else will you eat? <laughs> a simple surgery that was going to be performed on one of our ladies, I think. That, that entire procedure, because that lady's life was at stake, it will require about 600,000 for that to happen. Probably that lady would have been dead by now. But thank God for the ministry of resources with understanding. That lady is alive and healthy. And her family can see her preach Jesus today. Let me give you the last one. Koinonia is quiet. I presume you are thinking. Number six. I promise seven. The decision to build strategic destiny relationships. I won't say much there. I've said so much about relationships. The decision to build strategic destiny relationships. You must have one friend in your life. If you don't have it, when we are praying, pray. Because something is wrong. If you have many friends, you are in trouble. It's not a sign that you are popular. It's a sign that you are careless. Did you hear that? Because your values should naturally edit many people out of your life. If you think you are a celebrity and you have everybody just likes me, it's a sign you are a city without walls. You must have people of values and people of standards. But you need friends. You need friends. Many of us don't have friends. Hallelujah. Many of us don't have friends. I think I was giving a charge at the wedding of our people yesterday and one of the things I told them is that marriage was not designed to solve all your emotional problems. That is a big mistake. There are many people punishing marriage today because they expect to get all their emotional comfort from marriage. That is not the design. There are dimensions of relational and emotional comfort that only comes from your relationship with Jesus. There are dimensions of emotional and relational comforts that only come when you have godly strategy strategic relationships. There are dimensions of emotional and relational comfort that comes when you have a spouse. There are those that come when you have children. They were all allocated their space. Hallelujah. If there is a relational void in you, check whether you have a relationship with Jesus. Then next to that, check if you have quality people in your life. I'm praying for you. May you never lack an ear to hear when you are in trouble. Yeah. Especially if you are a man of God. Loneliness has killed many people because they do not have anybody they can confide in. They are afraid of everybody around them because they do not even know who to trust again. This is one of the problems of great people. They have gone through enough wounds and betrayal. They just believe that everybody is out to destroy them. But it is not true. There are still honest people. There are still godly people. There are still good people. There are still friends that stick closer than brothers. May you be one. And then may you find one. Final decision number seven. Destiny defining decisions. Number seven. The decision to be a blessing. Genesis 12, 3. The decision to be a blessing. You will think that this is the same as finding purpose. They are similar, but this is different. You can fulfill your assignment and truly not be a blessing. You can excel in career and yet not be a blessing. Do you know what it means to be a blessing? When nations arise and thank God for your life. When nations arise and say, thank God you are alive. When nations arise and say, imagine what would have been if you were not there. That is what it means to be a blessing. To be a blessing does not mean to be popular. You can be popular and not impactful. 
I learned that from Dr. Miles Monroe. There are many people who are pursuing fame and popularity. Popularity does not mean influence. Popularity does not mean impact. You can be very popular, known across the globe, but not impactful. Anna the prophetess was not popular, but she was impactful. Jesus was both popular and impactful. I choose impact a thousand times to fame and popularity. The burden of being famous is something that if you know, you will not be in a hurry to receive it. Hallelujah. The dynamics, the pressure that comes with this in quote celebrity lifestyle that people die to have. Choose impact. That somebody is smiling today because you are alive. Someone is eating today because you are alive. Someone is going to school because you are alive. Hallelujah. Someone will be saved this night now because there is koinonia. A family will be happy. Somebody will act upon what you are hearing now. Only God knows how far what I'm saying will get to and whose life is being changed now. Do you know what it means to get up in the morning knowing that you are going to be a blessing? You get up in the morning knowing that one sick body will be healed because you are awake. You get up in the morning knowing that one confused person will find direction. Of the many things that happen when people send me text messages, I tell you, sometimes people say thank you and all of that, but when I see testimonies of transformation, Apostle, I was like this before. I listen to one of your message, look at what has happened to me now. Sometimes in my silence, tears just begin to come to my eyes. And I say, Father, thank you for keeping me alive. It's purpose and meaning. I choose health and longevity. I choose economic empowerment to live a life of dignity and to serve the kingdom with honor. I choose quality destiny relationships. Finally, like Abraham, and like the seed of Abraham indeed, I choose to be a blessing. Let my life count. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Declare, I choose life. Ask the Lord to help you. Every decision that you have made that has brought you pain, every decision you are now making that is leading you to perdition, leading you to destruction, leading you to decline, leading you to failure, leading you to anger, leading you to jealousy. Ask the Lord to show you mercy and to grant grace that from today, you begin to make quality superior decisions by the word. By the word. The primary instrument that guides our making decisions is the word of God. Then the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then the counsel of those who have gone ahead. Go ahead and pray before I speak over your life. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.